Hello and welcome back to the FM20 Leeds United Save. Hope you're all doing well then. Looking forward to today's transfer special. We're going into season five now of the save. I can't believe we've got to season five already. Feels like we only just started it and yet we're now five seasons into this. And hopefully we're going to make some decent transfers as we try and make ourselves push towards the top four. That's the aim, push towards the top four and probably try and win the Europa League as well. I think we're capable of doing that this season. Before we jump into that though, there are a few things I just want to talk to you about very quickly. First and foremost, likes target, 200 likes on today's video. I think we can do that, it seems very achievable. So if we can get 200 likes, that would be amazing. Secondly, Football Manager 21 is around the corner. We've probably got about four weeks, I think, until the beta should be coming out, I would imagine. So the plan I think going forward is that we'll obviously finish off his lead save, We've been getting through a season in a week at the moment, just about, so that gives another four seasons or so. But I'd like to see if we can try and push it a bit more. So what I want to try and do is speed the episodes up a little bit. So more time in between episodes and so more games played in between episodes. Fewer episodes per season, but we get further into the future and hopefully win something big with Leeds United. So that's my thoughts on that. Let me know if you think that's good in the comment section down below. Whilst we're thinking of FM21 as well, link down in the description to go to two games to pre-order your copy of FM21. You get beta access, it's cheaper than Steam as well, and I get a bit of a kickback from every single order on there. So if you want to order the game through my link in the description at two game, that would be massively, massively appreciated appreciated. If you use the code TOMFM as well, then you get 10% off all, all orders, not just FM, uh, all orders. So everything you want to order through 2Game, use code TOMFM to get 10% off anything. And the third thing I want to talk about is the Patreon. I want to say a big thank you to Anthony Ward for joining the Patreon. Massively appreciate that. That is huge from you. Uh, so thank you very much. And of course, links down below to Patreon as well if you want to get involved. Anthony has chosen Tom Baldwin to be his Patreon player. So we're going to set his nickname now to Anthony Ward and that would be absolutely brilliant so hopefully he'll come through in the next few seasons and be challenging for a first team place and we're also going to be renaming Jamie Horgath to uh, Sean McRae for Thad so thank you Thad for your continued support as well so now the updates are out of the way let's get into today's episode first things first it's now the 10th of June uh, the transfer window opened yesterday which was the 9th uh, I just accidentally skipped forward to a 10th didn't mean to do that but we're now at the 10th so that's absolutely fine the transfer window has opened and as you can see here there are bids on the table for players already. Anderson's leaving the club because he agreed a contract with Napoli a while ago. But as you can see, uh, Sarov wants to go to Coventry on loan. We might agree to that, but we might not. Uh, and Yosko has had a bid in from less than £48 million, which we will be rejecting because I do not want to lose Yosko because he is a superb player for us. Now, obviously, the season that we've just had, we came sixth in the table. We got to the semi-finals of the Europa League. We won the FA Cup and we got knocked out the quarter-finals of the Carabao Cup by Arsenal. So, in my opinion... It was a very good season. I think we're now at the stage where we don't need to be making wholesale changes to the squad every single season. What we need to do is just get those one or two players that we need to take us to the next level. And I've been thinking long and hard, and I think there's two positions that we need to improve on. You might not agree with me, but I think we need to get a better left winger in than McNeil. I know we've had the curse of a left winger, basically, but I think we need someone better than McNeil. And I think we need someone better than Oliver. But... I do have my reservations about this. If we look at goals, for example, Renya right up there with 21, Bartol with 18, Gelhart with 17, Elenia with 10, Thomas with 10, uh, Aninia got nine on his loan spell to be fair, Holozek got nine this season, Dwight McNeil only got six, and he played the most amount of games out of all of these players. When we look at assists, he's second in assists on 10. But... Renier, Thomas, Tomiyasu, all up there, just one or two behind him playing less games than he has, basically. Same goes for Olazi, he got 12 assists this season. He actually only played 38 games this season. So really, I think, you know, he's done well assist-wise, but in terms of current ability, he is the weak link in that back line. He's got great crossing dribbling, he's got great physicals, and to be fair, his technicals all over are pretty decent, but... I just think we need someone a little more defensively solid than Oliver if we want to stop shipping 50 plus goals a season, improve that defensive record, win more games to then push up the table. So I don't think selling them is the solution. I think we just need other players who could push them on or replace them. They become the backup players. Obviously, we've had Nasi who's come in to be backup player to Dwight McNeil, but he's not developed quickly enough for my liking. So I'd rather send him out on loan this season to get a full season somewhere and we have Dwight as backup and get someone else in there. Same sort of reason at left back as well. Zagre came in last season, has looked good, but again, just isn't quite developing as quickly as I want him to. So I think maybe he goes out on loan this season as well. 
Oliver comes back up, we get a new left back in. You can also see from my gaps in the bench as well, sub four, sub five, one, two, three, four, and five. We need a backup right back and probably a backup centre back as well to Ferro. Todibo was in here last season from Barcelona on loan. He was great, but I doubt we'll be able to get him again. If we can do, that would be great. I'll try and bid for him, but I can't promise anything. And unfortunately, Cody Drama just hasn't, again, developed quite as much as I want him to. I just feel a bit risky playing him when we have to take Tommy Asu off, for example. So I just think we need someone else at right back who's better than better than Cody Drama. So they're the four places that I want to strengthen the squad this season. Uh, two first-team players and two backup players at the back. Board haven't been quite so kind to us this season with the transfer budget. Despite having £122 million in the bank, we've only been given £58 million to spend. Any, an extra £200,000 in the wage budget as well. To help boost that, we probably need to sell one or two players. Now, these guys, Bastian Funk downwards, they're all youth players that are in the first team to get tutoring from other players. So they are safe, they're still at the club. Nine Galan is leaving to become a coach, so you don't have to worry about Nine Galan. Obviously, Gutierrez and Todibo are leaving the club because they were on loan. I want to keep Oliza and I want to keep uh, Dwight McNeil. So I think the candidates to be sold are Callum Wilson, Cody Drummer, and Alfie McCalmont. Alfie's been good for us, but he's just not at the level we need him to. Same as Cody Drama and Callum Wilson was never ever really going to play for us. So hopefully we can get some good money for him. So first things first, I'm going to try and offer these guys out to clubs and then we'll look at players we can try and bring into the club. So initially, clubs are bidding £7.5 million for Cody Drama, uh, £15 million for Alfie McCalmont and nothing by looks of things for Callum Wilson so far. But because they're willing to spend this money off the bat, uh, we're going to reject these and then try and push the price up a little bit. Yep, no one wants these players now. Okay, that could be an issue. But West Ham want Dwight McNeil. All of a sudden, they want to pay money for him. This has come out of the blue. I've not offered him out to anyone. And it's some, if, if, we, if we got enough money for Dwight McNeil, I wouldn't say no. But 23 million is not enough. If we try and push this up to closer to... How much should we buy him for, first and foremost? We bought him for 19 million. Okay. So we want to try and push this up to, like, 30 million up front. And then, like, 10 million pounds down the line. Or something like that. So we get 40 million total. They've said yes. They've said yes to that. Um, well, this wasn't part of the plan. I didn't think this was going to happen. But considering that he's meant to be back up for us this season coming up... It changes, my, we keep Nassi as backup instead. We get 40 million pounds with Dwight McNeil. We bring some, I think this is enough we have to accept. And now Leicester want Farinez, but I'm not willing to let him go. I'd rather keep him at the club as backup for this coming season. I don't want him to leave the club. Uh, by looks of things, we're just not gonna get more than 15 million pounds for McCalmont. So I'm happy to accept those 15 million pound bids. The same with Drama, we're just not going to get better than £7.5 million. I keep offering out for more than no one bids for him and things like that. So I think they're the best prices we're going to get for those players. No one wants Callum Wilson, though. That's the biggest issue right now. Callum Wilson, I want to get him off the wage bill because, I mean, we have to send him on loan again. Loan's not the worst option, but we don't really want Callum Wilson kicking around the squad next season. Interestingly as well, Leeds have moved up 554 places to 71st position in European rankings. I presume that is based on coefficients. And given that we, yeah, it is based on coefficient. And given that before this season we had zero coefficient and then we got to the uh, semi finals of the Europa League, we've then got a huge coefficient now, which is why I've had such a meteoric rise. But somehow we're still behind Hull. How is that a thing? What have Hull done in Europe recently? Nothing. Nothing. Weirdly, coefficient-wise, Hull have still got one. Um, I guess this is remnants of when they were in Europe one season very briefly because they won the FA Cup, didn't they? Or came runners-up in the FA Cup. And back then, if you came runners-up, you actually got European places if the other team went on to win the Premier League or something. So that's what that might be about. Although then saying that, Birmingham, what have they done in recent years? They won the League Cup, didn't they? But did they get to Europe? I can't even remember that, if I'm honest with you. There must be remnants of that. But we are somehow apparently behind Birmingham and Hull, which I'm not too happy about. So McCalmont is set to leave to Brighton for £15 million. Pounds. He will accept that and we'll take that 15 million pounds as well. Thomas Sarov is wanted on loan constantly at the moment. We will get him out on loan, but I just don't quite want him to go yet. I'd rather see what teams are doing what before we start loaning players out. McNeil also set to leave as well. 30 million pounds and five down the line in those add-ons and then another five million pounds after league appearances. So wasn't part of the plan, but we can't turn down 40 million pounds for him. It's a lot of money for a player that was going to be back up this season. So I think that was right to do. And Drama now leaving for £7.5 million. So all the players apart from Callum Wilson have now left the club. 
let's see how much money we've got to spend. 107 million pounds, 108 million pounds basically. I can, I can work with that, that's a good amount. So now we really need to push the boat out for a very good left winger. A top quality one, and Vinicius Junior, potentially available. How much has he played for Real Madrid? Not much, was on loan at Napoli as well, obviously after our loan with us, which wasn't the worst, but it was quite bad. Would I want him back at the club? Maybe. What about Mohamed Itarum? Which I think I'm saying correctly, but I could be saying it all wrong. He's more of an advanced playmaker than the middle. Can can't, oh, he's not really a winger though. I want him to be a winger. Rodrigo is a possibility. The other young winger from Real Madrid. He's an option. How much would they want for him? Because he's played very well wherever he's been. And wherever he's been is Real Madrid basically. But he's played well when he has played. How much would they want for him? Let's just... Let's just put a bid out on 40 million. As much as we sold McNeil for, let's just see what they say about 40 million. Pedri from Barcelona, potentially an option, although I think this could be a very expensive option uh, and I'm not quite sure we'd get him. How, let's, let's put a bid of 20 million pounds just down on the table and just see if they say anything about that. And of course, Barcelona have come back and said no. He's got a minimum fee release clause of 116 million pounds, but I don't want to pay that. What do they want to do a deal on? 116 million pounds okay we're not getting Pedri and annoyingly Rodrigo also being rejected if we suggest terms they want 100 okay we have to rethink this in the meantime Everton are making a huge offer for Carlos Alenia 39 million rising to 50 million there's part of me that really wants to accept that but he's got no interest in joining Everton he was really good for us last season as well he's Best season so far, I think he's had. It says the season before was actually slightly better in terms of average ratings, but the amount of goals he scored for us this season from centre midfield was really good. So actually, I'd like to keep him. Back to the left wing search though, Bergwijn. The Tottenham want to let him go. He plays most games for them. Make an offer. How much do they want for him? 42 million is what they've said is good. Okay. Now we've had this before where we've had a bid accepted, we've cancelled it, and then we've gone back in for the player for a lower price and then they demand a higher price afterwards. This could be one of those occasions. I feel like 42 million is a good price though, for a player of his quality. Gets goals and assists, average ratings are decent. Are they decent enough? We'll find out, I guess, maybe. If I just ignore this, press continue, will that still be there? If I just press continue, it goes through. Let's go and find him again. Transfer, make an offer. Okay, let's lower it now. Let's lower it to like 30 mil. Suggest. They say no to that. How about, let's go 36 million, which of course they've said no to. So then do we go to 40 million? Suggest they've said no to that. So now we go to 42. So 42 point, it's weird. Okay, 42.5. And I bet they'll reject that now. Yep. 42.5 million pounds has been rejected. It's so weird how this happens sometimes in game. So let's go 44 mil, which they've accepted. Okay, 44 million then. I kind of still want to plug away at Rodrigo just because he's a little bit younger and has a little more potential than Bergwijn will have at 25. So I'm going to add him, then I'm going to declare interest for transfer. I want to talk to the media about him a little bit. I'm going to say, his interest, can we do a deal? It's too soon to say. Let's see what he says about that. And then we'll also uh, report get, uh, in fact, a signer scout, Victor Rorta. Go and look at him for for two for, for two matches. But maybe that wasn't the best thing to say because Rodrigo has said in a press conference that he's not interested in moving to Leeds. It would need to be a very good offer to even tempt me. So it's not like he's going to start complaining to Real Madrid and say, let me go. So we're not going to get him any cheaper than whatever they wanted. So Bergwijn might be the one to go for, although he's expensive, which is also annoying. Important player. Can we get him to regular starter? Does he, he wants important player. Okay, that's fine because I guess he is the first choice left winger. And he wants 110k a week, £7 million signing on fee. Jeez, not much, does he? Okay, um, well, let's get rid of his yearly wage rise. Get rid of that. Get rid of his sell-on percentage fee. He can have his goal bonuses if he wants. If he gets to that, we'd love him. So that's fine. Unused substitute fee has got to go as well. A goal bonus can drop to 15. I don't mind scoring goals, though. Appearance fee is annoying. Let's get down to 20. That's just annoying. And let's get the actual wage down to like 85k and this down to like 5 mil, suggest. He wants to talk. Uh, he's not very happy, obviously. Get these back down to what I wanted them to be. Get that back down to 5.5, but we need to get us under 100k. 90 grand a week. We can do 90 grand a week, lad. 
listen to me on 90 grand a week have more money for gold if you want that's fine 90 grand is something we can work towards come on 93 we've done it okay that's an all right contract it will make him the highest paid player at the club but we are putting a lot on him we're expecting big results from him if he doesn't get them he knows he's out unless of course we can't sell him and that's a bit of an issue i've got to say as well uh, thomas was superb this past season a 7.58 average rating from 49 appearances is mad that is that is class well in my son so it looks like Bergwijn is being wrapped up. Let's have a look then for left backs. Top of the list right here, Rayan Aitnuri. We'd love to get him in. Love to get him in. But I think he could be expensive. Transfer, make an offer. Let's suggest they want 57 million. Okay, we can work on this. He is incredible. I've, I've known him in other saves. Other saves, he's really, really top quality. He's got great physicals. His mentals are pretty decent for 22 and... Maybe the marking and tackling could be a little low. Let, let, oh, we need to get a good deal on this. Let's bring this right down to 30 million. Do they want to talk at 30? 38 they'll talk about. How about 33? They want 34 and a half. So we've got to go 33 and a half and then get that down to... In fact, let's get rid of that completely. We don't need to do that at all. Um, 36 is what they want. Okay. I can accept 36. Before we commit to that though, what other options are there? There's a wonder kid here from Milan, Vito Tonoli, who doesn't look as good right now. I don't think he's what we need at the moment. He's more of a fullback by, I mean, obviously he says wing back there, but he's not got good dribbling or crossing and his first touch isn't great either. So I'm not quite sure he's quite what we need. Give it a couple of seasons when he gets a bit older, he might be world-class, but we need someone right now. And Eight Nuri is that right now. Ryan Sessignon, he's around. English is more of a winger than a full... Or can play complete fullback. Wouldn't be the worst option. Also helps us out because he's English, I guess, as well. Uh, that helps us out with some registration rules. How much do Tottenham want? They just don't want to sell him, by look to things. Um, ugh, we'll be spending a lot more money either way than Ray and Eight Nuri. So Ray and Eight Nuri is a value option right now, weirdly. This Bastos guy from Sevilla is a regen. Uh, but again, like the guy from AC Milan, his technicals just aren't quite there yet. And we need someone right now. Alfonso Davies is an option. But he doesn't look as good to me as Ray and Eight Nuri. He's, he's due such a big upgrade in FM21. He's going to get such a big upgrade for FM21, I reckon. He's due it. Uh, but he's not quite where we need him now. I think Eight Nuri is our man. He wants a pretty decent contract as well. That's not too much money for us. Let's start negotiating when he wants a big wage rise. Well, let's just get rid of that first and foremost. He wants to win silverware in 25 26. I can't remember what season we're in right now. And he wants to improve defenders, which is what we want to do as well. So let's suggest those promises, finalise that, negotiate a contract. Let's get him down to like 50k a week. He wants 81k after five international appearances. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that unused substitute fee. Let's get rid of that sell-on percentage fee. The rest of that, 2.5 mil instead, clean sheet bonus. We'll put the clean sheet bonus up to 10, actually, because we don't get many of those. So if we do get them, I'll happily pay him the money for it. Suggest terms. He wants a lot more money per week now. Uh, 75k. Let's get him down to... 55 72 let's get that back down 60 66 let's meet in the middle at 62 which isn't the middle but i'm going to try and tell him that's the middle he believes it's the middle 62k per week i think that's a good deal everton's still bidding for carlos alenia as well do we entertain this is this something we should be entertaining because do we need to use this is the thing I think Valenzuela should be the man to lead us this he's 19 years old and as good as anyone else in our midfield is only going to get better he's got to start this season Kenneth Taylor was brought in with the option because he's young we thought he was going to be like you know the, the next sort of big thing in our midfield as well so I'd like to keep him around. Obviously, Calvin Phillips sticks around. He's very good. Ross Barkley sticks around because he's English. That's his only good virtue there, I think. He's a good player, actually, as well. But he's English as well, which helps us out with loads of registration rules. And, of course, Thomas is our CDM, who is class. A really top-quality player. So we could sell Alenia. If anyone was going to go, he's the one that does go. But he's been superb this season. He's very good to use in rotation. I, don't, I think we keep him, 
I, 50 million pounds is a lot of money or 49 million it's a lot of money because what we'd have to do is then bring someone else in who's available because i'll tell you what we don't have we don't have a proper 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 box-to-box -box midfielder i mean obviously calvin phillips is that sort of man for us right now but Elenia wants to be a Mazala, as does Valenzuela. Obviously, Thomas wants to be a deep line playmaker in CDM. Uh, Kenneth Taylor wants to be a playmaker, advanced or deep line. He's not really a box to boxer. What we could do is get in a world class box to boxer in, like a Frank Kessie, who's there. Available? But is he what we need? Well, he is. I said we need a box to box midfielder, but is he good enough? Is he better than Carlos Elena? Much better defensively, physically, in terms of speed, but not as good in terms of going forward with the vision, the attacking. The attacking is actually pretty decent on the same thing, but Carlos Elena's vision and technicality is just off the charts. And Frank Kessie is not going to be cheap either. If we make an offer, I mean, he's valued at 44 million. They want 63 million. But is that the gap we need to... F is, but that's the thing. This is the thing. Because we've not got a proper... A, oh, this is so difficult. I don't want to sell players and sign players for the, just the sake of doing it. But I think a player like Frank Kessie could transform our midfield a little bit. It just might give us that extra bit of stability that we need. Maybe we do do it. Transfer make an offer, 63 million. It's a lot of money, but we get £50 million back, so it's a £13 million loss, basically. Wage demands are going to be massive, though. Let's... Let's bring this down, obviously. Let's say 50. In fact, yeah, let's say 50. They want 57. How about 52? They want 55. 53? 53 million. Okay, finalise that deal. Let's see what he wants wage-wise. Far too much money. I, oh, I'm not sure we can even entertain that. And he wants a lot of this stuff as well. Um, no big salary rise. He we're not going to improve the coaching squad because it's good enough already. You can have number 19 if you're that desperate for it, lad. That's fine by me. Uh, intensive language course and defenders we already said yes to for someone else. So we have to improve defence anyway. Star player, important player. He wants to be a star player. Suggests that. Oh, okay. Well, he wasn't happy with some of the things we took. Okay. Well, Frank Kessie's not on the table then. So I guess Elenia isn't leaving. But we don't really have many box-to-box -box midfielders scouted out at all. So I'm going to scout them out. And I'm going to hold fire on the Alenia deal for now. And for what it's worth, Spurs have rejected the offer for Ryan Sessegnon, so Eight Nuri is our man at left back. Bergwijn also set to sign right now. I think we're happy with it. We're gonna press accept. Let's get him into the club, and that's our replacement on the left wing. Because he played for Spurs for a while, he might not count, so he does count as a foreign player. That's a bit annoying. Thought he might have picked up English nationality along the way. He might be on his way to doing that. Um, he's only got 360 days left until he gets English nationality, actually. So next season, he'll be fine. It's also the most we've ever spent on a transfer as well. The previous record was £31 million for Ferro. Interesting. Lone players uh, are leaving the club. We're not too fussed about Gutierrez because we've got strikers. But if we can get Todd Ebo back, can we propose an extension or loan? Make a loan offer? Get the extension in there? We'll pay whatever you want to. We, we want to keep him at the club because he's a very useful player to have. It would also solve that centre-back uh, backup issue as well because obviously we'd have him again. Nyngelen has now officially retired as a player, but don't worry, he is here as an under-18s assistant manager. He's not very good, I'll give him that. He's not very good, particularly he's working with youngsters. It's only a six, but we couldn't let him go. He's got to be at the club somehow, so here he is. Barcelona have accepted the offer for Todd Ebo, so that might be our centre-back issue sorted out already. Loads of contracts set to expire this season of really good players. So we need to get some of these guys signed up to new ones quickly. We've got until January to do it, I would say, before other clubs can start offering them contracts. So I'll do it before then, but I won't do it right now because I'll eat into the time that I've got to record this transfer special. But don't worry, I won't forget. Especially if you guys in the comment section tell me contracts, I won't forget. We're just looking at available right backs. And who's available? It's Odria Zola from Real Madrid, who's transfer listed for £22 million. Pounds. This could be a great backup for us. He'd be very, very competitive with Tommy Asu. Could also help him develop quite nicely as well. And for 22 million pounds, that feels like a steal. So let's put the bid in for 22 mil. And the thing is, if we get him in as well, I'd be more than happy to be rotating these two around and things like that. He wants a lot of money. We can understand that he wants a lot of money. But let's start negotiations. Let's make him a regular starter. Let's get rid of this. In fact, let's know. Let's keep on important player but let's get rid of this big wage rise. 
He wants to bring in a friend. No, let's get rid of that. We don't care about that. It's long term. Win silverware. Uh, intensive language course. Improve the midfield. Let's get rid of that. Suggest. He's happy with all of those things. Okay. Finalize that. Contract wise, it's a big one again. 75k. Let's try and get. He was on 61 at Real Madrid. So let's try and get him down to something a little more reasonable for our level as we get rid of other things. He wants 110 again. Let's take it down to. 70 we have to go really far down on the wage demands to start to get him coming down to what we want to do 91k 87k it's a bit too much if i'm honest with you particularly for a player that's meant to be more backup oh that could be too much i don't want to put the club into financial ruin and i don't think we will do with that but it is a bit too much but the players are now starting to come back from their summer break uh, let's welcome back to the club and say we're going to get top half this season they all seem very happy with that so that's great to see thank you very much for boosting your morale training camp's going to be in china so let's just auto pick that and they'll head off to china very shortly Tadebo is set to be confirmed at the club as well so that's the center back issue sorted uh we need eight no to properly sign and then of course we get in odriozola as well and and then we're all done and dusted. Bartol Barisic wants a new contract, which we have to talk to him about, apparently. He's only on 20 grand a week. It's still a lot of money. But he did score a lot of goals last season. 12 in the league, 18 overall. Let's have a chat with him. And let's say you've got plenty of time remaining on current deal. He wants money. Okay. Um, okay. I'm happy to talk to him with a new contract. How much does he want? 45 grand a week. It's not that bad. Let's get him down to like 30 or something like that. Let's get rid of that wage rise thing as well and that. And 30 grand a week. Talk to... Lads, talk to me. Be reasonable here, Bartol. Be reasonable. Fif He's holding me to ransom. 50 grand, but I want you on a five-year deal in that case. Which he said no to. Okay, that's fine. We just start Joe Gelhart ahead of you instead. That's what we have to do. As eight Nuri is now ready to sign for the... Edrozola is... Oh... Inter Milan want Odrizola. That's not so good because we want him. But eight Nuri set to sign. Accept that deal. That's good for us as we have to make a decision now with Carlos Elenia on. I don't want to make this decision. The scouts have been looking at players, uh, but not enough right now. Not enough. Leon Goretzka is potentially available, wanted by Manchester United. But, I mean, it'll be far too much money. Far too much money, surely. Well, 89 million. Yeah, we can't afford him, even with selling Alenia. And because I've not got enough scout reports done, we reject this one for Alenia for now. They might come back in. I mean, they came before. If this is their second time that they've come in for him, they might come in again for him later down the line. You never know. But right now, we haven't got a player coming in to replace him or, you know, do better than him. So we can't let him go. Eight Nuri is here. Welcome to the club. Thomas, welcome into the club, please. Your fellow Frenchman. That is fantastic. Add to the training camp squad as well. And that does, if I'm honest with you, uh, sort out the team for this season. Bergwijn will start on the left and then Eight Nuri will be back here as well. So that would be the team starting this season, I reckon. Obviously, if Odrizola comes in, it might be more likely. He, I mean, he could start ahead of Tommy Asu. I don't know who's going to be better, but obviously we can rotate those two guys around. Same with Ferro and with Todd Ebo. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the whole midfield trio to sort of rotate with Kenneth Taylor as well, Alenia and uh, Ross Barkley. So we're in a good position. We're in a very good position, particularly with Todd Ebo back in this position as well on the bench. So, I mean, we're doing well. Callum Wilson, I forgot about you, off of the clubs. Get him out of the club again. Let's £7.5 million. Someone surely would want him. Blackburn want him for, for £7.5 million and no strings attached. Blackburn, you can take him. They didn't mean to stall it, you can take him. The other two clubs, shame on you for wanting money for him. The youngsters in the squad as well. Maybe it's time to start thinking about loaning some of these guys out out. Thomas Sarov was in high demand earlier on. He is currently League One level as a deep line playmaker. So let's transfer offer him to clubs uh, on loan for the season as a regular starter. Thaddeus Davis is also a centre midfielder. Championship level. Okay, transfer offer to clubs on loan. Let's get him in a, let's get him in the championship for a season and then he can start for his next season hopefully. Karam Satilmish is the guy who got in from Galatasaray also championship level. Again let's get him out on loan somewhere. Lots of bids coming in for these players. Sarov was a League One ability player. Yes he was. So where in League One do we want him to go? Well Coventry is a decent shout. Predicted to come 13th but they've got great facilities. So I'm happy for him to go to Coventry. Salford 
On the other hand, our Pritikum 7th, which is better, but terrible facilities, so we reject that because the facilities aren't good enough. Swansea in the Championship, but only as a squad player, so we don't want him to be a squad player. We want him to be a regular starter like he is going to be at Coventry. Same with Sunderland, only a squad player. Uh, and in fact, all of his other ones are only squad players, apart from Blackpool. How good are Blackpool's facilities? They are basic so he's not going to Blackpool Coventry is enjoy your season loan at Coventry Fadius is getting lots of bids from the MLS but I want him to stay in the UK in the championship and uh, obviously Salford have come in we're not going to Salford uh, Wigan how good are their facilities great facilities and they are predicted to come 20th this season we'd rather him play at a club like Portsmouth who are a bit to come oh, it's only 17th but they've got excellent facilities Hull predicted to come 9th Hull is leading the way right now. Let's accept Hull. Uh, and then we looked at Blackpool and Doncaster already, haven't we? They're League One and Championship anyway. Uh, but only a squad player at Hull. Oh, I missed that. Only a squad player. We want him to be a regular starter. So in that case, we reject Hull and we send him to Portsmouth. You can see what I'm doing. They might not be playing at the best club in the division, but they'll be getting games every single week and they'll be training at great facilities as well, like at Portsmouth. So I'm happy for him to go there. As for our Turkish friend, it's only clubs in Turkey that want him right now. I'd rather him be playing in the UK, if I'm honest with you. But sometimes the foreign players just don't get bids for them coming from the UK. They have to go to their home country. Bit weird how it works, but that just seems to be the case sometimes. Uh, Trabs on Shaw, regular starter. They've got great facilities. Bashak Shahir, they've got great facilities as well. Is that a regular starter? Regular starter. Important player, Antalya Spore, uh, great facilities as well. So I'll accept them all and see where he wants to go. Callum Wilson also set to Lisa Blackburn. That was done very, very quickly. So thank you for your limited service, Callum. Uh, you were no use to us at all, but um, <laughs> you're gone now, which is great. Thank you. But maybe we should have kept him because Bartel is now very cross that we didn't offer him a new contract. We did. You rejected it. You rejected it. Um, let's open talks as soon as possible. Possible. He, he's happy to, to hear that. Okay. Take two. Transfer. Not transfer. Contract. Offer new contract. Squad regular important. That's absolutely fine. Negotiate this. Look, we, honestly, we're all sorted to just get rid of this wage rise after international appearances and yearly wage rise. We're all sorted. Don't be a prick, Bartol. 50k. Do it, do it, do it nicely. 50,000. 55 it is then. How have I been pushed to do that? And just as I was about to say, we've not heard from Audrey Zola recently. He's set to sign for us. He accepted our bid, rejected it from Inter Milan, and we're ready to bring him into the club. And that would be all the signings that we wanted to make. So I'll accept that. Brighton wants Holozek for £11 million. Are you joking? You're not having him at all, let alone for only £11 million. What on earth is that about? As the training camp is due to be finalised, Everyone's going. Have a great time, lads. Don't forget Odrizola, though. Get him along with you guys. Get him there. And uh, Farinez, welcome to the squad, please. So I think for the most part, like that's our squad sorted. That's our squad sorted for next season. And like I said, we didn't need to make sweeping changes. We needed to bring in two first-team starters. We have done. And we've brought in a centre-back in Todibo, who could be a starter. And Odrizola at right-back for backup who could be a starter as well. In the meantime, Thomas Sarov is out on loan to Coventry, so have a good time. We'll see you next season. Anthony Ward, you need to go out on loan as well. Sky Bet League 2, transfer, offer to clubs, let's get you out. Having looked through all of these offers though, um, none of them have got very good training facilities, which is annoying. So we'll reject them all for now and then see if someone else comes in later on that's better. I must have missed this bid for Kenneth Taylor's over £24 million. Of course, we will reject it. Although he's frustrated about not being able to move. I mean, quite frankly, Kenneth, it's because they've not offered enough money for you. Uh, let's discuss this then. Um, and basically, the finances weren't right on the deal they're offering. So we won't let you go unless they're offering £60 million. £60 million. They, he says 24 and a half. That's not enough. How much did we buy him for? We bought him for 25. Um, so I'm not quite sure why he's so upset. Okay, 40 million. And he's not happy with that either. Uh, and then we keep pushing up. He, he, won't, he won't care. This is my final offer. We're going to have a bit of a scrap with him now, I think. But uh, basically, he can't blame us for this now, I don't think. Eight million pounds left to spend of the current transfer budget that we have. What we could do is clear all of this and look for minimum fee release clauses of £8 million or less. 
Okay, eight million pounds and below. Let's scout these guys out and see if any of them are actually any good. Norwich want Olives are on loan. What are you on about? No, you're not having him at all. Get on the bin, Norwich. You're not having him. Never again, Norwich. Especially to you, Norwich. Squad are unhappy, though, with the treatment of Kenneth Taylor. Why? Why do you? Why are you so desperate to let him leave the club? Why? This, I, I never quite understand this. Right, what's, what's up, lads? We want him gone, basically, is what they're saying. We would be considerably weaker without him, and I've got no interest in making us less competitive. Which they've all realised, oh yeah, of course. Bloody hell, you idiots. So they are now all on my side. Kenneth Taylor, get yourself back in the bin. The transfer window will shut, his head will be sorted out, and he'll be absolutely fine. Crystal Palace, though, making a £9 million bid for Fabrice Hartman, who's still in the under-23s. There might be some more players there we can get rid of. Uh, Fabrice Hartman has never developed how we wanted him to. We bought him for £4 million, thought he was the next big thing, and he's always flopped. So I think this is worthwhile. Uh, can we push this up to £10 million and then 2.5 down the line? Suggest. They say yes. Thank you very much. Wow. Out of nowhere. Wolves making a huge bid for Calvin Phillips of £40 million. But I'm sorry, Wolves, we just can't ever let Calvin Phillips go. He's a Leeds man through and through. He's got to stay. I am still looking, though, at box-to-box -box midfielders. And Haidara has come to my attention. RB Leipzig player. Does look good, has played well. And I like what I see. He's got a minimum fee release clause of £29 million as well. Oh, okay. I can suddenly get behind that. You can also play CDM. Let's just compare him. Let's just compare him very quickly. We've got Carlos Alenia on there. We can find him on here, can't we? Uh, Alenia, Carlos. Not quite as good as Frank Kessie, but we would have understood that. But defensively is better. Physically is a bit better. Speed-wise a bit better, but not quite as good going forward. But he's more a box-to-box -box midfielder, which actually probably should be still good quite going forward. If we had 29 extra spare, I'd be tempted. Let's just add into a shortlist for now. Fabrice Hartman also set to leave the club for £12.5 million. That's very good. That takes us up to £20 million. Oh, we only need an extra £9 million then for that, that defender. Thing is, we're now overspending on the wage budget. And actually, we've only got £16 million. I guess we didn't get all of that £12 million given to us for transfer budget, which is very strange. It's at 100% there. So maybe we had to pay on add-ons to some of the players or something like that. I'm not too sure. But maybe, oh, we're a bit far away still. Hmm. If one player was to leave the squad, who would it be? Who would it be? The thing is, I don't want to lose anyone. I'm very happy with the squad that we've got. So I think I'm being a bit too greedy, wanting that extra centre midfielder. So I think I just need to settle that we're just not going to get him. It got pretty late recording last night, so it's now a new day and it's time to finish off this transfer window. I need to remind myself what we've done, actually, because uh, quite frankly, uh, one night and I seem to have forgotten what we've done. Bergwijn at left wing, Todibo centre-back, Aitneri left back, Odrizol at right back. That's all the positions that we wanted to sign, isn't it? And then we've got rid of McNeil, McCalmont, Fabrice Hartman, Callum Wilson, Cody Drama, and then a few players out on loan as well. Oh, a few players left in the contract as well that we weren't going to keep, apart from Anderson, but he's quite annoying that he left the club season preview has us as seventh or favorites to come seventh this season not too far behind teams like arsenal and tottenham and things like that so we really could push to the top four of this team i think is there anywhere where we're lacking just a little bit potentially back up on the left wing but but nasty is going to be fine he'll be fine this season i'm sure I think we're pretty strong in centre of midfield and, and CDM. Right wing is good with Holozek and Renia and of course a Nino there as well. Obviously up front we've got Barisic, Gelhart and Holozek can play there too. Centre back, Ferro, Todibo, Josko, Tomiyasu, Varano, they can all play there. Maybe a little light at right back in terms of rotation but those two should be fine for the season. Same with goalkeepers, same with left backs. I think this is a sorted team. The only thing we can do now is just bring in better players than we've already got. But that's obviously going to cost an awful lot of money to do that. We haven't got that money right now. Maybe like another striker would do, because obviously Barisic and Gelhart are both very young. But last season they got nearly 20 goals each, so I don't have too many qualms about them. I think we've got a good team. I think this team could be the one. I guess what we could do now is just try and sign a few young players with five-star potential. But there's not that many around, or at least that many that are around that are affordable. There's this guy here at San Lorenzo in Argentina. 
It looks like a centre-back, 19 years old, 750 k is worth, five-star potential, wanted by American clubs. I thought it was going to be PSG then. If it's PSG, we're going for him, but only American clubs want him. Depends how cheap he is. If he's very cheap, he might be worth a punt. Let's make an offer. Let's put 1.5 million on the table and see if they say yes to it. Should have given Taylor that new contract when those first contract things came through, because right now he's got no interest in signing a new contract at all. So... It might actually serve us better to get rid of him. Eight million is what they want for Daniel Pasta. Centre back, we can play with both feet. Can play right back, left back. He's got decent marking, decent tackling, decent heading for 19 years old. He's only six foot, but we can work with that because he's got only eight jumping reach. Hmm, that could be the issue, the eight jumping reach. If we can get this down to like, three and a half million or something stupid like that so they want six now how about four million let's just keep trying to push it right down all the way down four million they want 5.5 .5. how about 4.5 million suggest 4.9 how about 4.6 suggest that they say no so it'll be 4.7 hmm annoyingly we've got one too many foreign players in the squad so players like Aninho can play because he's under 21 years old, which is fine. Uh, Sixto Montoya apparently can't play, though, even though he's under 21. So we can't put him in the squad, even though he's a very, very good player right now. So we have to get him out on loan somewhere. Which player doesn't make the cut? Who do we have to get rid of? The thing is, I don't want to get rid of any of them. But if it's got to be someone, it might have to be Nassi because he's the weakest of those players. But he's kind of integral to our backup system a little bit on the left wing. We need him. We want him playing. Second best left winger. But Gelhart and Hollers that can both play there if needed. It just puts a lot of emphasis on Bergwijn to actually step up and play a lot of games. Annoyingly, he's under 21 as well. Why can he not be registered? Where is he? Where's Nassi gone? Where is Nassi? Where are you? There he is, foreign, but he just can't play. He doesn't count as a number 21 player for some reason. So if we don't put him in, if we take him out, we meet the requirements, but then we can't play him, which means he'll have to go out on loan. So that's put a bit of a spanner in the works. But I think we have to do it, unfortunately. Oh, I miss this. Leicester are looking to smash the club record transfer with a bid of £39 million for Leeds Joe Gelhart which will then rise to £48 million. That's a lot of money, but he's got no interest in joining Leicester. And if I'm honest with you, I'd rather keep him. I'd rather keep hold of him because he scored 10 goals in the league last season, 17 overall in all competitions. He's only 21 years old. He will get better and those bids will only increase in the future. And he's English as well. We need English players at the squad because right now we are at maximum. We're over maximum, basically, for the foreign player limits. So uh, we need good English players. So we're going to reject that. But that's a big bid. But that is pretty much all of the transfers wrapped up now. I know it's not been the most exciting because we've not had that many transfers going on. But like I said, this season is all about just adding to those small areas that we need to have improvements. Other than that, we've got a good baseline. We just need to get better and they will get better because most of our team's very young so for this season i want to be starting van vort in goal over farinez this season obviously rayan ain't is going to come at left back alongside a a, a a tried and tested back line of yosko and uh Ferro, both very very good players and then of course we'll have we can't have tommy because he's injured so audrey zola is going to start ahead of him deep line playmaker obviously will be thomas because he was superb last season the box the box midfield of position isn't quite fully covered yet, but Calvin Phillips is the best player to fill it. And then, of course, Valenzuela will lead the line in that midfield with Mazala. Right wing, well, Renny's got to be starting these games. Uh, so he's going to start this one. On the left-hand side, we've got no choice, really, other than to put Bergwijn on left wing. And then up front, who do I want? Gelhart or Barisic? Let's go for Gelhart. I've also realised how pale I do look. Let me take this jumper off. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean, although I'm wearing a grey t-shirt underneath. So, look, all of a sudden, all the colour comes back in, because the, the white reflects the light, which then affects the green screen, which then affects the camera, which why... It's weird, isn't it? Same if I try and wear, like, a pink or, like, a light blue or something like that. It just messes things up. So I don't look like a ghost anymore, and this team is certainly alive and kicking, because we're going to go and beat Liverpool and show them that we mean business this season.
So as kickoff is upon us, Valenzuela leads the line for us as he looks to get the ball into Renier. Gelhart is through, and if we can get an early goal in this game, what a start. Joe Gelhart, first of the season, less than 30 seconds into it. Valenzuela with a good pass to Renier. I mean, Liverpool just haven't switched on, have they? That's the issue with Liverpool. They've just not switched on. I mean, what their defender's doing there? Which defender was that? Virgil van Dijk, of all people, just didn't switch on. Gelhart runs past him, slots it just ahead or just in between the post and Alisson Becker. And that's it. 1-0 to us. I don't think we could have asked for a better start to the game. Although it might get a lot worse now as Ferro, well done, clears the corner. Jordan Henderson on the ball for Liverpool. Nearly tackled by Renier, not quite getting the ball there. But uh, we are forcing Liverpool back as Firmino gets it into Salah. Salah shoots and, OK, it's levelled up. Let's, let's not get too excited then. I mean, it was good pressure from us. Very good pressure from us to keep pushing them back. But obviously we left a little bit of a hole at the back as we've now given away a penalty. Come on, Van Voort, do your thing. Save this penalty from Mohamed Salah. And oh, I thought it was going to. He didn't do it. He's missed the penalty save. Salah gets his second goal and we're 2-1 down. You can guarantee that this will be a boring game now that will finish 2-1. You can guarantee that now, can't you? As uh, Salah puts the ball in the middle, cleared. Renier does get the ball, but can he tackle Robertson? We lost possession to Robertson there. Although Gelhart is really trying to go for him. Doesn't quite get the ball off him, but we do regain possession at the back as Bergwijn now, our new signing, races down the left wing. Come on, lad, get a ball into the middle. He gets through, he gets past one, gets past two. Valenzuela's there, come on. Absolutely sublime stuff there from Bergwijn. I think that's the first time we've seen a left winger of ours get the ball on the halfway line, run past several, and maybe I'm doing a disservice to some of the players that we've had in the past, but we've not normally seen left wingers do that for us. Bergwijn's the first one that's really just picked the ball up and run with it, and he's fantastic. I am probably being dramatic. We probably have had wingers on the left-hand side who have been doing that, but just not consistently enough. I mean, Gelhart, uh, not Gelhart, Bergwijn's done it 100% of the time so far, so I'm a big fan of that. If he can keep doing it and keep making it 100% of the time, that would be absolutely superb. As Thomas gets the ball to Joe Gelhart, who almost grabs his second of the game. We're turning the screw here. Almost at half time now, and Liverpool looking for another attack as Brewster can't get the shots away. It's another penalty. Oh, you've got to be joking me. Salah steps up, same place, scores it, a hat trick for him. If we hadn't given away the penalties today, we'd be running away with this match. Half time, 3 2 down. It's not a bad position to be in. Another day, we're winning this game 2 1. We've been unlucky so far. But let's see what we can do in the second half. Because if we can get a result against Liverpool, not just in the FA Cup final, but also in the Community Shield as well, this is a great chance for us to announce ourselves this season as potential top four candidates. I know it's quite quite big to say, but if we can, oh, Renyan, lucky there. If we can put in two big performances against the champions of England, then it really does show that we, you know, with a good season, a bit of consistency as we've gone 4-2 down. You hate to see that. So maybe I'm talking a bit too prematurely, but really, like, it's not a bad performance. We are out shooting them. We're out possessioning them right now. Consistency this season could equal a Champions League place. We've got good squad depth in most positions as well. If someone's not playing too well, it's not too much of an issue. And right now, we've got some players not playing particularly well at all. So we might make some changes in a second's time. As Sadio Mane comes forward, Van Vogt with a good save. Right. Unfortunately, Calvin's looking very frustrated on a low rating. So we're going to bring him off for Kenneth Taylor. Let's see if playing him sort of calms him down a little bit. Uh, Ferro's going to come off for Todd Ebo, and I want to give Onino his debut instead of Renier. So let's do that. And just as I do that, Odrizola, of course, picks up a tight hamstring. We now can't take him off. Surely this should count as a pre-season friendly. You can just, like, give everyone you want a substitution. Uh, annoyingly, that might affect us for the opening few games of the season if he's injured, and so is um, Tommy Asu. That could be a little worrying for us. But hopefully that's not the issue as Mane is forward and, okay, he's made it 5-2. It's not quite as clear-cut now, is it? Or I should say it is more clear-cut now that Liverpool are a much better side than us. Although we are still out-possessioning, out-shooting them, I think the difference is just the individual quality of players. The reason Liverpool win the title is because they've got absolute world-class players in every single position. We can't afford to do that yet. But what we do have are very, very good players in each position. That's the difference right now. If we had world-class players, as well as Liverpool's world-class players, we would be winning this game. We would be winning it. I really believe that. And 
hopefully over the course of the season, our young squad, we've got, what, Gelhart's, what, 20? We've got Valenzuela, who's, um must be, oh, another goal conceded. Valenzuela is 19 years old. Van Vaught in goal is only, like, 20 as well. Josco must be no older than 20 as well. Um, eight Nuri's only about 20. I mean, I'm saying 20. It seems like a, a very generic age, doesn't it, right now? We'll check on some ages in a second, but... They've got time to grow and develop, and we've got a good few seasons left of this. Oh, this could get embarrassing now as uh, Salah puts the ball into the middle, and it's in the back. See, I don't think we've played badly. I really don't think we've played badly, and yet we are now 7-2 down. So Van Voort is 21, if I can get rid of that. Uh, obviously, Todibo's come on the pitch. He's only 23, which is pretty young. Josco is 21. Uh, Valenzuela is 19. I know that. Thomas is only 21 as well, 21. Uh, eight Nuri is 22. Oninho is, what, 12, 18. Uh, Bergwijn is 25. He's the oldest player in the squad. Gail Hart is 21. And actually, Kenneth Taylor is only 21 too. So we've got a very young squad, inexperienced. The, the, the consistency won't be there yet. It's not going to be there yet. And look at look at the match stats. This is not a 7-2 game to Liverpool. By any stretch of the imagination, it's not a 7-2 game. I think we've been hard done by here, and that is very, very unlucky. Very unlucky, but we can take a lot of positives from that. I mean, I will go aggressive right now, because I've kind of got to and we concede seven goals, but was a lot to build from that and so that is where today's transfer special finishes uh, we've made the signings obviously they've not shown themselves in the best light in that first game but it's against Liverpool who have just I think they may have just won the Champions League as well if you look at the, the schedule look at last season go down to the bottom they won the Champions League so they won the Premier League of Champions they won everything everything the result is not a reflection on the way we played we played a lot better than the result says now obviously we said we want to get on with things because we want to get as many seasons as possible in before FM21 comes out so next episode will actually be pretty soon I'll do the Newcastle game and this game in the Europa League group stage the first one but the episode after that will probably end up being like these ones and then the episode after that will probably end up being like if we get to a knockout game in like February time or maybe end of January, something like that. We want to really push on with this season, try and get this one finished by the end of the week. So we are going to move quickly. We are going to move fast, but it's going to be good. And hopefully we get some good results in there as well. So thank you so much for watching today's transfer special. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and think that we've made some good additions to the squad. Let me know in the comment section if you think we have done. Of course, drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. <laughs>